Welcome everyone to this Facebook Friday edition of the OTRS Central Q&A. A reminder, they happen every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the Q&A episodes. Monday and Wednesday, you answer, ask excuse me, your questions via Twitter. The Friday edition, you have to go to Facebook. Sorry for the late post to prompt you for the Facebook questions, but it didn't take long to get enough. So let me get started now. Uh, Matt Stingmont Mini asks, besides Cena, who else in the Breakfast Club has problems with putting people over, if any? Uh, Batista doesn't seem to. Definitely not. I don't know if that was always the case, but towards the end of his uh, run, he had no problem putting over Cena in 2010, and now he's when he came back, he definitely had no problem putting people over. Uh, Shawn Michaels sometimes would be a bitch about things, but he also put over a lot of people, and sometimes maybe he shouldn't have put over as many people as he did. Um... Triple H is kind of a mixed bag because he runs hot and cold in terms of his willingness and desire to put people over or not. In more recent times, I think as he's transitioned to more of a front office role, he understands the importance of maybe A, getting himself still some big money matches and getting some big payouts, which he surely still does, but B, also understanding that it can't always be about him, just him, forever. So his track record over the past couple of years of putting people over is much better than it was maybe a decade before. Um... Seamus, he's put some people over, um, and nor is he quite in the position of the Breakfast Club as some of the other members. Uh, Orton, again, is kind of a mixed bag. There's a period of time where you look at it, he seemed to have a big problem, but then you know, he also has those moments where he's lost to Ziggler clean and Cesaro clean, and he lost twice in a row clean to Mark Henry. Um, but, like I said, he runs kind of hot and cold, too. The one that just runs the coldest and seems to refuse to want to do it, other than that rare exception, is John Cena. There you go. James Forkham asks, is it pointless for Sting to join WWE because of his age and to just maybe only have one match? Depends on how you define pointless. I'm sure from his pocketbook, it's not pointless. Um, in terms of getting a Hall of Fame induction, getting a big payout, getting a big Mania match payout, it's not pointless at all. Um, like I said before and talked about in other videos, I have mixed feelings about Sting potentially returning to the WWE and wrestling a match in WWE. On the one hand, I'd like to see it for certain reasons, but on the other hand, I wouldn't like to see it for some of those other reasons. Uh, Stephen Bradley asks, if Cena somehow beats Brock Lesnar, how long will Cena hold the title? Um, I'll put it this way, Mr. Bradley, for crying out loud, if you have Cena beat him there, then Cena might as well just carry this strap to WrestleMania 31. Might as well. Just saying. Uh, let's say here, James Fields asks, the British Bulldog had five title matches on pay-per-views in an eight-month span from 95 to 96, but never won the title. Why do you think that is? Um, I think they viewed Davey Boy as a good dance partner, but never a guy that they were going to put at the top. He was never going to be a guy that they wanted to put the pressure of carrying the company on, but they knew that in select spots he could go out there and make somebody else look good in that title picture. I mean, if you're back then... And yeah, it wasn't a great time for the WWF. Um, you're going to sit there and put the belt on the British Bulldog? I don't think so. You know, while from a fan standpoint, it might have been nice to see at one point in time, nah, not everybody could be a world champion. And sa sadly, Davy Boy Smith was one of those guys that fit into that category. Really good performer, really good worker, not world championship material. Sorry. Uh, Jeffrey Platt asks, who's your favorite WWE champion and why? It's Hogan. And the reason it is is because that's the guy I grew up watching. That's the guy that made me become a professional wrestling fan. I also look at all the big marquee matches that Hogan had during his first title reign that lasted almost four well, actually it did a little over four freaking years. Then I look at his second title reign and the fact that that lasted a long period of time. I always thought Hogan was the definition of what you wanted in some ways out of a world champion. I mean, here's a guy that changed the business, changed the company forever. Um, you know, to me, that's my favorite WWE champion of all time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Irvin Griffin Jr. asks one. It says, a viewer on my YouTube page asked, what if TNA did something with Netflix to do a show just like something like Orange is the New Black, only theirs is a wrestling show? thought it was an interesting possibility, but what do you think? It's funny because even if they did that, I wonder how much money they could actually make doing it. Furthermore, it would just come across as nothing more than a cheap WWE Network knockoff. And, you know, even if TNA did that, even if that was a wise thing to do, they wouldn't win for trying on that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Um, let's see here. Luke Winstaley asks, have you heard from that loan shark fraud ever since the video you uploaded about it? No, uh, not from them directly. I mean, other people that they sold the information off to, but not from Mullins and Kane. No, I think Mullins and Kane learned their lesson. Uh, Samuel Shepard, how were WWF in the Attitude Era able to book the World Tag Team European and IC title in an effective way? And sometimes WWE struggles to book one well now. It's a difference in philosophy. You know, you had more long range vision and sometimes long range booking to go along with it. Uh, more of a priority on those titles, more competition at the time where you had no choice. You had to make everything count and everything matter. Whereas that's not necessarily the case anymore. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. Tyree Lagan asked, in your mind, who would be the current champions? Uh, what would you imagine Sting doing for his one final match? I don't know what you mean by who would be the current champions. Like if I had my druthers? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would rather have Reigns versus Cena at SummerSlam because I think now is the time to strike, not WrestleMania next year. I'm just saying. Uh, in terms of the IC champion, I agree with the Miz being the champion. In terms of the United States champion, I don't know so much about Sheamus. I'm just being honest. Tag team champions, I'm okay with the Usos having the belts. I'm frankly okay with Paige, or excuse me, Paige, AJ Lee having the Divas championship. So I don't have a lot of qualms necessarily with who has the championships at this point in time. Uh, Berwin Asker Vargas asked, do you think that the new faction with Xavier Woods, Big E, and Kofi is WWE's response to TNA's faction of MVP, Lashley, and Kenny King? Um, no. It comes across that way to a certain degree, and I understand it, but, you know, this is more of a response and a reaction by the WWE to some of the criticism, fair and just criticism they've gotten from certain media outlets because of their treatment uh, in a prejudicial, discriminatory, and flat out sometimes racist way towards their non-white, especially their black wrestlers over the years. I think this is more of an attempt to shut that up. This is more of an attempt to respond to that, be reactionary to it, try to change the narrative. Um, then you asked, uh, and from what you've seen, do you think they're going to be heels? I would assume they're going to be heels. Um, but, again, I don't have that much confidence that the WWE is going to go where they need to go with this. Uh, Brandon Acevedo says, Watching your SummerSlam 97 review, I agree that Austin's match versus Owen was crucial for the WWF and the wrestling business as a whole. Let's assume Austin couldn't have continued his career. Do you think the WWF could have survived the Monday Night Wars with Rock and Triple H at the top without Austin? Whew. That's a very big woulda, coulda, shoulda, and what if. I think they could have survived. I think they would have survived. If that's your question, is just if they could have survived, then I think yes. Um, but would they have gotten to the nuclear heights in the stratosphere that they did without Austin and consequently the Austin-McMahon rivalry? No, they wouldn't have. Uh, but I think they would have survived and they'd still be around today, perhaps, and still would have probably outlasted WCW and ECW. Uh, Kerry and George asked, if Sting were to face Bray Wyatt and put him over at WrestleMania, do you think that would elevate him into being a big-time player and him becoming a huge threat? Kind of depends on how you look at it. You're talking about a Sting that's in his mid-50s, that's probably 15, 17 years past his prime. We're talking about a Sting who can no longer even effectively apply his own submission finishing hold. Um, but we are still also talking about a big name in Sting. I don't think it would make Bray Wyatt a huge threat. I don't think it would make <clears throat> Bray Wyatt a big-time player, per se, but it wouldn't hurt. It would be a nice notch in the belt. Um, Chris Johnson asks, should Razor Ramon have been WWF champion? Again, this is kind of similar to Davey Boy in one sense is that, are you really going to put the belt on him? Difference being, though, with Razor Ramon is you had these different concerns, you know, they weren't sure that they could always count on Razor Ramon. They weren't sure he was always going to play nice and do what they wanted him to do if he was the champion. And at the time, they had guys like Brett, and they had guys like HBK, and they had the Diesels. So they just didn't feel like they had room for him. Should he have been? Perhaps, but it didn't happen. Uh, Jared Anthony Simmons asks, what finish are you a bigger fan of? A submission finish or a maneuver that leads to a pinfall? What a maneuver! Depends on the submission, depends on the maneuver that leads to a pinfall, depends on how it's set up. Uh, so it, it really depends. I, mean, I will say I'm not the hugest fan of submission finishers all in all, 
but when done right, when executed properly by the right individual in the right way, they could be every bit as effective as a boom, decisive pinfall finish, in my opinion. Um, using an STF with a guy that's kind of half ass and from a technical sense like John Cena, I'm absolutely not a fan of. That makes absolutely no sense. Um, let's see here. Dom Kelly asks, saw the rumor about Spike TV's decision not to renew Impact on their network. Not sure if it's true. If it is, what's next for TNA? If it is true, and like I said, I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying until Spike officially comes out and says it, I'm not going to 100% say it is true. Uh, if it is true, then that means that TNA's got until October to figure something out. And if they don't figure out something by October, I have to wonder why the hell they sat there and uh, hired the United Talent Agency to handle this for them because clearly they're uh, being allowed to be used here by Spike TV. Spike TV is playing hardball with them. Um, if I had to guess right now, I would think that TNA and Spike TV will still find a way to maybe make it work, but we might not find out an announcement about that until towards the end of September. Uh, Davey Jefferson asks, if you were in charge of TNA, what would you do to make the product better after getting a new TV deal? Well, first and foremost, frankly, making the product better it sounds great, but you got to get a new TV deal. Doesn't matter how good you make the product, if you don't get a new TV deal, if you don't have a place to air your wrestling on prime time, your company goes kaputs. It's that simple. I mean, it really is. So all that other shit really, frankly, doesn't matter until you get that done. Uh, Robert Hart asks, are we ever going to get Undertaker versus Cena at WrestleMania. I know WWE fucked that one up. Yes, they did. And I don't think we're ever going to get it. And that's a goddamn shame. That was one of those true, real monster matches that we will have never gotten. And it was suck. Um, let's see here. Robert Amaronio Wyatt. Would you rather fuck Naomi once or AJ Lee a hundred times? Naomi once. Did you expect me to say anything differently? Um, Taryn Rooks asks, Do you think Sting and The Undertaker will have a match at WrestleMania 31? If yes, do you think it would get over as an awesome tacular match? Uh, there's a chance they do that match, but there's also an equal chance, maybe a greater chance, that they don't do that match. Personally, I don't see as much appeal to it now that the streak is no longer intact. To me, there's just no point of Taker wrestling WrestleMania anymore. The only way I think you could justify it at this point in time would be to have him wrestle Brock at WrestleMania 31 in kind of a revenge match as a retirement match. Fuck it, you already had Lesnar in the streak. You might as well have Lesnar fucking retire him too at this point. So ridiculous. Um, I don't know if they'll do Sting and Undertaker. I don't know if they should. Kennedy Ramirez. Where would Jeff Hardy be if he stayed with the WWE? Probably uh, no longer with the WWE. Probably would have gotten his third strike. Probably would no longer um, be able to work for the company until a certain amount of time had elapsed. So probably best for all parties involved that Jeff Hardy took his ball and went away for a few years. I'm gonna say. Thanks to all of you that submitted your questions for the Facebook Friday Q&A. I love doing these Q&As. I love getting these questions from you. love answering these questions. It's easy content for me, and you guys seem to enjoy it. So check back again Monday for another installment of this Q&A series. Also, make sure you check out all the other great content on this channel, most notably the SummerSlam review series that is well underway right now. In terms of the Q&As, I'll see you back here again Monday for another episode.